Now hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. I know Ottawa Senators fans who stumble across this video may be kind of pissed off with the way it's titled and with the idea we're bringing up. But I'll get into your team in a second. I'll go over why this actually may not work. And for fans who are not Sens fans, then hey, this is actually a pretty illuminating conversation, I feel, because it gives all of us an opportunity to acknowledge what's been going on in Ottawa. So, not only are we talking about the Sens, but we are also talking about the Tampa Bay Lightning. And, in particular, the idea of the Lightning going after a Senator's defenseman that has kind of been on the trade block for a while. The tail of the tape is that Tampa Bay is unfortunately not as good this year as they have been in previous years. They've lost a lot of their depth guys. Some of their top guys that are still here are still doing top guy things. Nikita Kucherov is one of the best players in the entire gosh darn NHL still. Victor Hedman, one of the top defensemen in scoring. Steven Stamkos does not have a contract for next year, but he is still getting on the board. Not to mention Braden Point, Vasilevsky, you know the drill. But because Tampa Bay... You could very well say there was already kind of a need to add on defense that existed. We had ourselves articles and trade sentiments that have been popping up over the past few months. Even if you go back to January 18th, this is a piece published on the Hockey News by Michael DeRosa talking about how the Tampa Bay Lightning should have their sights on Ottawa Senators defenseman Jacob Chitrin. With Chitrin trade talk picking up, the Lightning should make a push for him. Now, when it comes to the argument that's presented in the piece, again, this is from about a month ago, but it does talk about how Julian Brisebois made it clear the club will be looking to improve their roster at the deadline, and one specific area they should strengthen to look at is their D group. The article then concludes that Jacob Chitrin should be on the Lightning's radar over the next few weeks. The Sands, at the time of the article's publication, were open to hearing offers for Chitrin while in the middle of another poor season. When noting that he can play on the right side, the Lightning need to at least explore the prospect of targeting him. Now, pause before we go into a further conversation. I mean, a lot of the rest of the piece just talks about the similar things we've talked about before. Oh, he's making $4.6 million a year. He's pretty good. He scores a lot of points. Chitrin's a great player. But part of the reason I wanted to revive this conversation today is because if the Tampa Bay Lightning were already in a position to trade for defensemen or look at the market and see what options are available on D, now, more than ever before, you could very well say that should be a priority because of the Mikhail Sergachev injury. Now, he's going to be out for a while. And for Julian Brisebois, thinking about bolstering up his team, if there is the possibility that Sergachev is out long enough that he can just be LTIR'd till the start of the playoffs, then you would have to think that Julian Brisebois explores that kind of option, right? We already seen this same Tampa Bay Lightning team do extreme cap shenanigans like the Nikita Kucherov thing just a few years ago. It won them a Stanley Cup. This team in Tampa Bay, more than any other team in the NHL, except maybe the Vegas Golden Knights, they're privy to being able to do these kinds of moves. Oh, Sergachev is out for a long time? Okay, well, how long? If he's out till, let's say, the end of April, then maybe we could keep him off a little bit longer than he needs to be, just so he's LTIR'd long enough that he's fully healthy, quote-unquote, for Game 1 of the Stanley Cup playoffs. That's the kind of idea that seems like it would be right up the Lightning's alley. Now, when it comes to potential trade targets, there are some other names being tossed out there. We can actually make another video or two later in the show talking about one of the names. But Chitrin is the one that comes to my mind because out of all the guys that I think Tampa Bay has had conversations about, people are talking on social media, speculating and speculating, Chitrin, I think, is the best one. And when it comes to the Lightning needing a defenseman or an upgrade on D, now that Sergachev is out, you could say it's even more likely that they go down this route. But at the same time, there's a very interesting conversation that you bring up from the Ottawa point of view. Because as we had talked about, the article from the Hockey News that we looked at, that's from a month ago. What's happened since then for the Ottawa Senators? Well, they've been starting to win games. And they have been winning a lot of games. Like Brady Kachuk last night against the Blue Jackets. He got a hat trick. Nice. Good to see Brady Kachuk going out there and getting what I believe was the 69th hat trick of the year. Something like that. I don't know. It's pretty nice. If it's not 69, then hey, it's not nice anymore. But 
One of the more underrated aspects to this Ottawa Senator season, especially as of the past few weeks, has been the return of Shane Pinto. Because if you take a look at this tweet made by Brent Wallace, the Sens are now 6-1-1 with Pinto in the lineup this season. They've won 10 straight when he records a point, and Ottawa is 33-5-5 when Pinto gets a point. He's a huge part of this team. And now, when you really think about what the Ottawa Senators had bestowed upon them from the Shane Pinto half-a-season suspension, you have to start going out there and wondering, hey, wait a minute, the NHL really did do that to Ottawa, didn't they? A reply says, We lost a guy for 40 games, but somehow the Leafs are the most persecuted team in the NHL. Not to mention the fact that Shane Pinto's current contract in the NHL, it's $775,000 a year. Sure, it's only for one year, he'll have to resign again in the summer, but he's doing all of this, getting all these points, and being this key contributor as a point-per-game guy at league minimum. And the Ottawa Senators are winning so much more now that he's back. Sure, you could say the games don't mean much. Sure, you could say that what the Sens are doing here at this point of the season is just kind of taking away playoff points from other teams. But you can't go out there and deny the results. This team has been stringing together wins, and they're looking so much better ever since Shane Pinto's return that you kind of have to start wondering... Did the NHL really screw over the Ottawa Senators with this Shane Pinto thing? I'm not saying that the eight games played in which Pinto was suiting up for Ottawa, oh, 6 one and one record, what's the points percentage on that? That's like an 8 one two, five points percentage, which would be on pace for a 133-point season over the course of 82. I'm not saying that if Shane Pinto played the entire year with the Ottawa Senators, they'd be in a position to beat 130 plus points. But what I am saying is that they'd probably be a lot better, and the magnitude as to how much better would be very significant. So, I don't know, is just, just like a stretch of games? Is this just the Ottawa Senators going on a heater because of the status of the season, because other teams are not taking them seriously, because teams like the Toronto Maple Leafs are playing down to their opponent and not really feeling like they need to try? Like, we had talked about this in the Morgan Riley suspension video, but for Ottawa, hey, you guys had a rivalry that was kind of dead from the Leafs' point of view because they didn't take y'all seriously. So you went out there, you won the game, and before winning the game, you put a dagger to their heart with that slap shot empty net goal, reignited whatever rivalry was going on, and you sent a message by saying, hey, we can do this, and because you responded to that, Toronto, here's a boot. Morgan Riley, put it on, you're out for five games. That is a message sent. And even if it's not like, oh, a playoff clinching, series winning, whatever kind of game, it's entertaining as all hell, you won, and it comes in the next series of games when you're actually starting to string together a lot of wins. So, Ottawa is looking pretty good. My question is, now, with the Tampa Bay Lightning... Probably, and I say probably just because I'm speculating here, probably being more so in the market for a defenseman now than they ever have been in the past before the Sergachev injury, now that Jacob Chitrin, who was always going to be tossed out there in trade rumors as a part of a winning team, does it really make him easier to trade? Is it more likely? I hypothesize the idea of the Lightning wanting to go after a trade for a defenseman more so now than before, which would seem to make it more likely. But if the Sens just straight up start winning and winning and winning, then what's the verdict on that? So, Ottawa Senators fans, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about two questions. One, is the likelihood of trading away a guy like Chitrin more or less now than it was, let's say, two, three weeks ago? And two, second question, how much did the NHL screw y'all guys over? How well do you think the Sens would have been if you re-signed Shane Pinto to a reasonable contract and the entire gambling suspension thing didn't happen? How well do you think you guys do in 23-24? And if you're a Lightning fan stumbling across this video, is Jacob Chitron even one of the guys you think your team should be targeting? There are other names out there, like the David Savars of the world, the extra defensemen like the Tanems, etc., etc. You could talk about all those guys, but we're going with Chitrin here because of the hockey news piece from about a month ago that was published on their website, and I'm not too sure if it was on the magazine too, but, you know, the hockey news, right? Let me know your thoughts as to whether or not Chitrin should be that guy, and if you think it's actually possible now that everything has been going so well in Senstown. 
So that's in the comments section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.